Hello, in this presentation I will talk about trajectory generators used in robotics. The purpose of the presentation is to introduce most widely used trajectory generators in robotics and in particular we will focus on trapezoidal trajectories, S-shaped trajectories, partial S-shaped curves and polynomial trajectories. We will also discuss the advantages and disadvantages of each of the trajectories. In robotics, a trajectory generator is used to compute a set of points or configurations over time to move the robot from one position to another. Trajectories must be feasible in terms of kinematic and dynamic constraints and, in general, they should be smooth. Trajectories can be used to provide a coordinated axis control so that all joint movements finish at the same time. Therefore, a trajectory can be defined as a set of points the positions, velocities and acceleration references over time, as we will see next. But first, let's discuss some of the widely used trajectory types. A trapezoidal trajectory consists of a trajectory with a trapezoidal profile in the uh, trajectory speed and generates abrupt changes in the acceleration. It's the fastest one under the same maximum velocity and acceleration constraints and it has three phases, as we will see. An S-shaped curve has a continuous acceleration profile which generates an S-shaped velocity profile in five phases. The partial version of the S-shaped curve generates a smooth acceleration which generates an elongated S-shaped velocity profile in seven phases. Finally, a polynomial trajectory is a very flexible curve where increasing the order of the polynomial allows to consider additional control conditions such as initial velocity and acceleration. As previously mentioned, a trapezoidal trajectory consists of a velocity profile as shown with t1, t2 and t as time instance to compute where the trajectory changes. For time instance t0 and t1, the robot will move at maximum acceleration to reach the maximum velocity as shown. That will imply that the position increase is the square velocity divided by two times the acceleration. But since this displacement is also necessary to decelerate the robot, the actual displacement between the time instance t1 and t2, noted here as s, can be computed as indicated. That will lead us to know the time instance t2, because during that time the robot is moving at constant speed. With all that, we can also know the overall trajectory time, t. It is important to remark that here I am only considering the case where the trajectory implies to reach the maximum velocity. There might be cases where the position displacement is so small that the trapezoidal profile become uh, actually a triangular uh, profile. This case is not considered in this formula. Once we know the time instance to switch, we can get a closed form expression for the acceleration, the velocity and the position profile using these piecewise functions. Here we can see a numerical example of a, tra a trapezoidal trajectory with q0 equals 0 degrees, qt equals to 20 degrees and the maximum velocity is uh, 2 degrees per second and the maximum acceleration is 1 degree per second squared. Under these conditions the time instance to generate a trapezoidal trajectory are t1 equals 2, t2 equals 10 and t equals 12. Express all of them in seconds. A S-curve trajectory includes a triangular uh, profile in the acceleration that avoids abrupt changes as before. In this case, the slope of the acceleration, also known as jerk, and the time instant t1 can be computed from the maximum velocity and acceleration. Just do the math and you will see that it's easy to obtain the expressions indicated here. This will actually imply that the position and the velocity at time instance t1 and t2 
are also uh, known once we know the jerk. And therefore, the actual displacement during the time instance T2 and T3, uh, where the uh, speed is uh, kept constant, uh, is also or can be also known. This implies that we can also compute the time instant T3, and using symmetry relations, we can also compute time instance T4 and T. Again, once we know the switching time instance, we will be able to compute the acceleration, velocity, and position profiles in a closed form expression. In this example, we can see again uh, the same uh, uh, conditions in order to generate a, a trajectory, but in this case using an S curve trajectory. We can see that the overall trajectory time is 14 seconds in this case, and therefore this curve takes more or two more seconds to reach the same target position under the same conditions. But uh, the changes in the acceleration are smooth, as you can see. A partial S curve trajectory is very similar to the one shown before, but with a trapezoidal profile in the acceleration, instead of a triangular profile. This means that there is a constant acceleration time at uh, a maximum acceleration. Uh, the math here is more tedious uh, to explain, so I prefer to let you to deduce all these formulas using the same procedures as I shown before. The main difference here is that the jerk, noted here as J max, is now given. There's a minimum value, which is the one we computed before for the S-shaped curve, and the maximum value, which is indeed infinity. Therefore, this curve is in between both previous solutions, depending on the selected jerk. The curve profile have, in this case, seven switching time instants as shown. Once we uh, compute those time instants, the, the curve can be obtained as a piecewise expression, as you can see. In this case, we, ha we, we, uh, we see the numerical example using exactly the same conditions as before, but in this case, the jerk is equal to 1. So, as I mentioned before, if we select a a jerk, uh, the half of it, that would lead to the same solution as the S curve trajectory. While if the jerk is infinity, that will lead to the solution with the trapezoidal trajectory. But for this particular case, the overall trajectory time is 13 seconds, as, as you can remember, is a solution between the two previous solutions. A polynomial trajectory is a trajectory with a polynomial expression over the time with n plus 1 coefficients, being n, the order of the polynomial. The velocity and acceleration trajectories are just simply computed using their corresponding derivatives. A very common case is to use a cubic uh, polynomial trajectory. In this case, we have four parameters to find out, and their values will depend on the initial and final positions, as well as the maximum desired velocity. At the half-time instant, we will have a peak in the velocity profile because its expression is a quadratic expression, as you can imagine. Therefore, solving the maximum of that quadratic expression for uh, the given uh, maximum velocity, that will lead us to know the actual trajectory time. Once we know the trajectory time, then we can find out the values for the cubic expression just by uh, imposing conditions uh, such as the initial uh, and final velocity and position conditions. That will imply to solve a linear uh, system of equations with four unknowns. Here I just directly show the actual values for the coefficients for this linear system equation. In this example, uh, we would like to generate a cubic polynomial trajectory with a maximum velocity of 2 degrees per second. In this case, the trajectory takes 15 seconds to reach the final position, and the actual cubic expressions of the trajectory can be shown here below. 
To conclude this presentation, I would like to mention also natural uh, splines. They are uh, very well known, it's a very well known curve to interpolate a set of points in the Cartesian space and we can use this tool to generate points over time where we need to provide a set of n plus one time instants noted here as Ti and their corresponding position values noted here as Qi. At the time intervals we build a cubic trajectory and impose some continuity conditions in the position, velocity and acceleration. As a result, we get a smooth piecewise trajectory. I do not show all the maths behind, so I recommend you to Google them if you want to implement them, for instance in Wikipedia. Here we can see an example where the following conditions are imposed. We want the trajectory to pass over 10 degrees after 5 seconds, then go back to 0 degrees at the time instant 10 seconds, and then to minus 10 degrees at time instant 15 seconds, and back again to 0 degrees at time instant 20 seconds. This, uh, with, all, with all this information and all the continuity conditions imposed uh, on the the cubic uh, expressions, uh, we can get uh, the actual uh, uh, cubic expressions for the position as you can see here. As you can see in the figure, uh, I have colored all these four trajectories using, uh, in this case, different colors. Well, in this presentation I have introduced different trajectory generators widely used in robotics. Thank you very much.